Thank you for the music to guide us into worship today. Welcome to worship. Uh, happy Thanksgiving and happy beginning of Advent. It's the first Sunday of Advent, and we're launching a theme this year for our Advent season is moving from the cross to the manger, kind of looking at our faith backwards. You know, we sometimes we kind of end at the cross, but we're going to kind of work our way back to the celebrate the coming of Jesus. And today we're starting with the, the second coming of Jesus in our scripture lesson. And our theme this morning is the invitation that we receive. I um, want to let you know something very special is happening next Sunday. Uh, this congregation turns 60 years old this year. Uh, some members started gathering in 1960 and, uh, and started worshiping together, but they incorporated in 1961, so this is the year of our 60th anniversary. And in honor of that, we're going to be having a cross that's made with different words that have been used that people shared to describe our congregation. And then we're inviting every, every household. And so that's, if you're single, if you're, if you're a married couple, if you're a family, every household uh, will bring in a cross that's three to four inches tall, and they're going to be put around that one cross as a representation of the, we are the people of the congregation here. And then as people are welcomed and brought in new to the congregation for the future, they're going to be invited to add their cross to that. And that will be on dis displayed on the wall right outside these double doors over here. So next Sunday, that will be a fun way of celebrating our congregation's history. I also want to let you know that the NALC, the North American Lutheran Church, has put out an Advent devotional. We have printed copies available at the Information Center. And, or you can actually go on the NALC website and download a copy of that if you would rather do it digitally. Um, the, the one thing is if you're looking up the NALC's website, it's the NALC because if you just type in NALC, it will take you to the National Association of Letter Carriers. I may have found that out three or four times before I got it figured out properly. Anyway, uh, that's it for the announcements this morning. Um, we're going to begin our worship service with the lighting of our Advent candle. So if you would come forward. Good morning. The word Advent means coming. Advent is a season of expectation and longing. Our Advent theme this year focuses on rediscovering Jesus as we move from the cross to the manger. No matter how familiar the story may be, Jesus speaks into our lives. The first candle we light is named the prophecy candle or candle of hope. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 15, verses 12 through 13, we can have hope because God is faithful and will keep the promises made to us. Our hope comes from God. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We are invited to know God through his word as we gather in worship and when we join in learning at the table together. This is an invitation given to all and one that we should treasure as a congregation. Let us pray. We give you thanks for how you are at work in this place and among all of us. Help us to never take for granted the invitation to gather. As we celebrate this first Sunday in Advent, remind us of how your word has spoken through the generations and still speaks to us today. A word that calls us to remember that you are our God and we are your people. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
as we come into the Lord's presence, we come the only way we can, honestly. And I invite you to stand and really begin our worship as we confess our sins and seek God's forgiveness. It's written in the word of God, if we claim we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. The truth of your word, O Lord, exposes our sin and cuts through all our excuses and denials. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior, forgive us for the wrong things we have done and for neglecting the good you intended us to do. Let the truth of your word set us free and grant us the power of your Holy Spirit to think and live according to your will. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. It's also written in the word of God, my dear children, our hope and prayer is that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world, amen. All right, let's sing together.
Father in heaven, as we pour out our praise to you, we pray that you would open our hearts, open our ears, open our minds to receive your word as it comes to us this day. Amen. Please be seated. On this first Sunday of Advent, we have three scripture readings. The first is from the prophet Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. And from the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of our God because of you? Night and day we most earnestly pray that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of God, of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. And our gospel for this first Sunday of Advent is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 21st chapter. We hear the words of our Lord Jesus. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming on a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I mentioned in the announcements as we begin our series for Advent of moving from the cross to the manger, our first Sunday's theme is invitation. And Pastor Jody and and Heath, our new children, youth, and family director, and I, we've been talking about Advent and tying it in with children's ministry activities, and and we came up with these themes, and when I said, let's make the first Sunday focus on invitation, and then I looked at the scripture lessons about three weeks ago, and I read this gospel lesson. Doesn't that sound like a wonderfully inviting gospel lesson? You know, terror and anxiety and people melting with fear for all that was coming upon the earth. 
doesn't sound all that cheery. And I started, as I was praying about this, what, what are we inviting people to? Or if Jesus were here today, what would be the invitations that he would give to us? And the first one is the invitation of the ultimate spoiler. And I think the, the result will be uh, the invitation to smile when you think of what Jesus has done. Now, how many of you like it when people ruin movies for you? And they give you the spoiler of this is what happens. You know, I remember this, I think it's old enough now that anybody who hasn't seen it by this point, it's your own fault. But the, the very second Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back, we waited in line for hours to be there on the opening day. And as one theater was emptying and people who just finished it came out, somebody shouted, Darth Vader's Luke's father. And I tell you, the people around me, we were enraged. It's like, are you kidding me? Why would you have to do that? And there's a certain sense when you read what the Bible says about the end times, there's a certain sense where the ending is kind of spoiled, right? God wins. Love and truth prevail. Evil and sin and death and the devil are destroyed and there is a new creation that is born. It's kind of like we already know what the climax is and what the end result will be, and it is good. In fact, it is better than anything that our minds can imagine. I think of what the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians. He says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the glories that God has prepared for those who love him. Man, that's, that's a good spoiler, isn't it? And there's a certain sense for the theme that I settled on for today is Jesus is inviting us to smile, even in the midst of this world, and even in the midst of this warning of things to come, Jesus gives us this spoiler. Now, some people may say, well, but why do it? I mean, why, why tell people ahead of time, oh, wait, God wins, it's all gonna be good, because, I mean, well, then why not just kick up our feet and watch more football and just relax and take it easy and enjoy life if we know the end already? I think there's a difference between movies and sports and real life and real faith. And I think the reality is if we experience what Jesus warned is to come in this world without knowing confidently what the conclusion would be, the reality of living in the trenches and living through it, we would all lose heart. Like Jesus warned, we would be the ones that would be overcome with despair and anxiety because we would the, the present reality and the present suffering would be so overwhelming. So Jesus very intentionally and as a great gift, he said, I wanna give you an invitation to smile even when you think of the things that are to come, because you know the destiny that awaits all who love the Lord. I think the other thing, an, another invitation Jesus gives us and another reason to smile is his invitation to grace. When you think about the judgment of the world, when you think about that theme, and it's interesting that Christianity is not the only religion that talks about a final day of judgment. In Judaism and Islam, and even in other religions that don't necessarily talk about the day of judgment, there is a certain sense of getting what you deserve. You know, if you look at the Hindu religion, you know, there's this thing of dharma and karma. And dharma is that what you do in this life will catch up with you in this life. And then karma picks up after that. What you get away with in this life will catch up with you in the next life. And there's a certain sense in which there is absolutely no grace, no hope in that judgment. And we have the message of Jesus who loved us and came to give his life as the ransom for our sin that we can be forgiven. And I don't know how many of you, I hope every one of you have gotten at least a little taste of those moments when you realize how perfectly and how completely you are loved by Jesus. And the freedom that comes from it, it's almost like how can you not smile 
when you realize I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to fear. God has washed me clean. He has forgiven me. He has received me. He is on my side. It's kind of an awesome thing. And I think Jesus gives us the invitation to smile. I was thinking of one of my old favorite hymns this week, um, It Is Well With My Soul. And uh, the third verse has these words. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul. And doesn't that make you just want to smile to know with certainty that we are loved, that we are forgiven? I think Jesus also gives us an invitation to draw strength and courage and peace from him, smiling because we know we are not alone. And I think of how many places Jesus promised that he will be with us to the very end of the age. And you think about what that means. Jesus said in our gospel lesson, he said, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. He warned his disciples right before he went to the cross. He said, in this world, you will have many troubles. And it's hard for me to imagine him not breaking into a smile when he said the next words but take heart, I have overcome the world. And that promise that the one who overcame all that has fallen in this world is on our side and with us. I think of Jesus' promise where he said, come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. What a gift it is that we can come to Jesus as we are. And we may not feel like smiling at the moment. The, the anxieties and the pressures of life may weigh us down. But knowing we have someone with us that will never leave us or forsake us, that we can carry those burdens to, we find a source of strength and comfort and courage and peace that is beyond ourselves. Again, I think of what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter four. He said, I know what it is to have little and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether having plenty or being in need, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Doesn't that bring a little bit of a smile to your face today? Jesus is saying, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He is the one that offers that same promise that the Apostle Paul learned how to cope with the ups and downs of life. And if you've ever thought that that life was hard, you might want to read some of Paul's sufferings that he experienced, you know, shipwrecked and beaten by bandits and flogged and stoned and beaten with rods and eventually executed. He knew what it was to have the ups and downs or to have plenty or to have nothing. And he said, but I've learned the secret. I don't rely on my own strength. I rely on Jesus who is my Lord. Well, the last invitation that Jesus, I would say, would give to us today and the last invitation to smile because of it is the very gift of prayer itself. Because Jesus loves us, because he is faithful and he is with us, we have this amazing mystery and wonder of prayer, but it's based on his promise. I think of Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. Then you will come and call on me and pray to me. And does anybody know what comes next? And I will listen to you. Have you thought about that lately? Doesn't that make, bring a little bit of a smile to your face to think that the God of the universe who came and was born into this world in Jesus Christ is giving his personal promise. I will listen to you. Talk to me. 
and you think of all that's going on in your life, and I think with this Thanksgiving weekend, I, I have a kind of a hope and a prayer that every one of you here today was blessed with good times, with family, with health, with prosperity, with great food, with all of the celebrations of the things that make life good. That would be my hope and prayer for all of us. The reality is I, I know too much. I know that there's a lot of people here and I know that even in my own family there is hurt and there is grief and there is brokenness. And to know that no matter what you're going through at this moment in life, whether it's a time of deep sorrow or deep struggle, or whether it's a time of true thanksgiving because things are going well and there are blessings in abundance, to know that we can talk to God about all of it. And in doing so, the burdens of our heart, the things that Jesus warned might weigh us down, are lifted up to him. And in their place, we're given those gifts that only Jesus can give. Hope, peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. These fruits of the Holy Spirit that really are what make life worth living. Jesus says, don't let yourself get weighed down Pray and talk to me and lift up everything that you carry in your heart so that your heart can have room for the gifts that he wants to pour out on us. So I got to admit, when I started the prayer and study part of getting ready for this message, I was very surprised that the invitation would be one of smiling that we begin our Advent by smiling at the wonder of the love of God and the promises Jesus made. And I just want to caution you that this smile is not the churchy smile. People make fun of that, you know, the smile you put on when you go to church so that you can convince everybody that everything's all right with you, but inside it may be a totally different thing. And not the smile of... <laughs> Jesus loves me, but I don't think he loves you, and I'm a little better. Not that smile. And not the condescending, judgmental smile that others might assume, but the genuine smile that comes out of knowing the goodness of Jesus. And I think you know what smile that is. The smile of genuine peace and joy and hope that we have because Jesus came to us, loved us, died for us, and rose again. Amen. of Jesus Christ, the earth would shake beneath the weight of darkness.
join your hearts with me in prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, we come before you today, and Lord, we thank you for the wonder of your promises, and we thank you that every promise from your word are not just empty words, but you have acted to prove that you are faithful and you are good, and that you have the power to deliver on those promises. And we thank you, Lord, that as we gather this week and we celebrate it and give thanks to you for all the good things in our lives, we thank you, Lord, that it's not only in the good that we find how good you are, but, Lord, in the hardest times, in the times of pain and sorrow and grief, Lord, there we experience your true power to comfort and hold us to heal us and guide us in ways that nothing else in this world can offer. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. And in the midst of this, Lord, we come to you and we heed your word that we love one another more and more and that we carry each other's burdens in prayer, supporting and caring for one another. And so we continue to pray for those who are sick and in need of healing, for those who are nearing the end of their life in this world, for those who carry the grief in their hearts of those who have gone before us. Father, we continue to offer our prayers for Nancy Arneson, for Kitty Walker, for Mark Gehring, for Doug and Nancy Hadley, for Lori and Rod Andreas, for Roger and Kate Magnuson, for Tom Azell's brother, Zed, for Tom and Francis Oline's son-in-law, Rob, for Ardith Rasmussen, for Bill Zerbies. We continue to offer our prayers for Sophie, and we ask, Lord, that you continue to heal and continue to protect and bless her and comfort her as she battles this cancer. We pray your blessing on her parents, Emily and Jeremy, her sister Esme, and of course her grandma and grandpa, Sue and Jerry. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing you give us in all these things, that you hear us and that you have the power to help and to comfort and to heal and restore. We also pray today for those who are grieving and especially we lift up to you Debbie Strobel at the passing of her mother, Johnny. We also pray for the family and friends of John Ritter. And we pray that as we look at all that you have done for us in Jesus, that you would meet them in their grief with the hope of everlasting life that is given through Jesus. Father, we lift up this troubled world in which we live, those who are poor and those who are hungry, those who lack adequate clothing and shelter. We lift up places where there is violence, where people are judged and excluded and hated on the color of their skin or the amount of money or education they have or what nationality or language they speak. Father, in the midst of hatred, in the midst of division, bring reconciliation, Lord, 
and help us to see each other's humanity and to see the love you have for all people. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all these for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we prepare our hearts to receive our Lord as he comes to us in his holy supper. On the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after the supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take this and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. And we pray together as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated and come forward as the ushers guide you. Forgiveness was bought with 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. We have one more prayer that was given to me that I neglected to include in the church prayers. Could we pause and just lift up a, a fairly urgent prayer? Father in heaven, we lift up to you Jim and Kathy Buchelman's neighbor's family, for the Randall family as they mourn the sudden passing of their daughter-in-law, Diana. Bless that family as they grieve, reach into the pain and the shock, and give the comfort that only you can give. We ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's join in singing.
Just one word before we go. Um, you notice Pastor Jody wasn't here today? She was here at the first two service, but it's Lucy's 16th birthday today. And she asked if she could miss this service so that they could have some family plans. So if you see Lucy meh, this whole week, just make sure you embarrass her a little because we got to at the 10 o'clock service and it was beautiful. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. amen.